uh, online from Glendermott Presbyterian Church uh, here uh, this morning. Uh, you'll know uh, we're already, we're online. Um, if you're on Facebook, YouTube, uh, you're very welcome uh, joining with us here this morning. If you're listening to the service uh, at a later stage on Drive 105 this afternoon, uh, it's good uh, to have you join with us in this service of worship uh, today. Uh, you'll know we are online only. Um, because of the, the current COVID restrictions, uh, we are only meeting uh, online for the next four Sundays. Uh, and hopefully after that, at a review at the end of the, the month, uh, we will hopefully, and God willing, be back uh, worshipping together once again. Uh, but at the minute, uh, the advice uh, from government is to, to keep safe and, and to stay at home. Uh, and so uh, we have decided uh, to close our, our churches for these four weeks so we can keep safe uh, and stay at home. Uh, I know in a previous week, uh, we looked at that verse from Hebrews about not giving up the habit of meeting together as some are in the habit of doing. Um, but we have to balance that uh, with, of course, uh, the greatest commandment that Jesus says, love your neighbor as you love yourself. And so our closure is a statement of, of our commitment uh, to, to loving our neighbors uh, and ensuring that everyone uh, can keep safe. Uh, but we do trust that you'll join with us over the next four weeks as, as we're online and we'll keep you posted uh, as we go along week by week uh, regarding uh, reopening again. We are permitted within uh, the regulations uh, to remain open uh, for charity collections and for private prayer. Uh, you'll know uh, we open on a Tuesday evening from seven to eight. Uh, and so we would encourage you, especially at times like these, uh, to come and make use of that. The church uh, is here. Uh, we will be here uh, to uh, facilitate you to come and spend that time in prayer. Certainly our country and the situation we're in, uh, and not just in the country and the world, uh, needs prayer and God's people should rightly be praying for it. So I encourage you to come along seven o'clock on a Tuesday evening. Uh, the food bank collection will still be going on. Uh, I want to thank uh, those who have donated to it so far has been a wonderful response from you. And uh, certainly at these times, uh, these are times of, of great need for many. And it is good for those of us who God has richly blessed uh, and enjoy uh, a good life and good provision uh, to help others out. So that will be there available on a Tuesday evening uh, as well. Could I be bold enough um, to, to make an announcement. I have uh, one or two little issues uh, that I want to discuss with committee um, uh, in regards to the months. Um, I know in these days and in these restrictions, uh, we can't have committee meetings in a normal way. Um, so I'm proposing uh, a committee meeting via Zoom. Uh, I know when I've mentioned that word Zoom to, to many people before, uh, there's been a uh, a sense of terror almost, uh, as you mention it, but uh, I would like to try it this time uh, and we'll see how it goes. That committee meeting will be next Monday night, not uh, the 11th, but the 18th, Monday the 18th at 7.30. And if you keep an eye on the Facebook page uh, for the details, uh, for the Zoom uh, meeting details, I'll put them up on Facebook uh, there. If you're not following on Facebook or you're just on, on YouTube, send me a wee message uh, to the manse or, or to my mobile uh, and I'll send you the details of, of the, the Zoom meeting. But as, as we come uh, to, to worship, uh, I just want to uh, want to read a few words just from uh, our moderator uh, as they sent out the message yesterday uh, about our closures uh, because it is an anxious time, it is a worrying time uh, for many of us, but we are... Uh, assured that God is still in control. God is still sovereign over all these things. And uh, I just want to read you the words from our moderator to reassure us um, in that. Our moderator says this, these are deeply uncertain times with almost every day bringing challenging news and announcements. As the COVID-19 pandemic continues daily to grow in severity, we sense fear is also again growing. However, God remains sovereign over all things and continues to be at work in the world, often working out his purposes both in us and through us. We continue, therefore, to pray that all would know and feel God's love and close presence at this time and that the church, scattered throughout our communities, would continue to be salt and light, pointing people 
to the Lord Jesus Christ, the hope of the world. And I trust that we ourselves would know uh, that hope and we would know that assurance uh, that God indeed is in control of all things. So before we we even come uh, to worship, let's just uh, pause uh, for a moment and let's let's pray together. Uh, Let's commit our time of worship to God in prayer. Let's, Let's pray. Father God, as we've already recognized, we meet in what are very different and and difficult circumstances. Father, we meet once again simply by these online means, Lord. We know at the minute we can't, because of the pandemic, we cannot meet uh, face to face and person to person. And Lord, you know how much we miss that. But Father, we are so thankful for these means. Lord, we are thankful for your provision for us. Lord, you've given us this beautiful church building. You've provided us with the the means to access all our people and all our community online. And Father, we pray that as we join together, yes, separated uh, by space, but joined by the internet, Lord, we pray that each of us would know that assurance and comfort in our hearts that we are united together. Yes, separated by space, but united in Jesus. Father, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for that restored relationship we have with you through Jesus. Lord, that relationship which brings us comfort and which brings us hope even in these difficult times. Father, we thank you that you are that almighty God, that you are that sovereign God, that there is nothing going on in this world that you do not know about. Lord, you know each of our worries, you know each of our anxieties, you know each of our cares, but your word tells us to cast all our anxieties on you because you care for us. Father, we thank you that you do care for us. We thank you for your love and for your grace and your mercy in each of our lives. And Lord, we take solace and peace from that relationship with you. So Father, as we meet here Uh, today, Lord, we pray for your blessing on our time together. Lord, speak to each of us, Lord, as we seek to lift high the name of Jesus to the community around us. Lord, bless us as we seek to bless you. Lord, we commit our time of worship to you, knowing we come confidently in the name of your Son and our Saviour, the Lord Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. We're going to to join together and worship together now. We're going to to sing our first piece of praise. Uh, Come thou fount of every blessing. Uh, Let's join together uh, and worship God. Let's sing uh, praise to him. Oh, 
thank you uh, to Mark and Rebecca uh, for leading us in our worship. Uh, I know it's very different for you uh, as well, but it's good uh, to have you here with us. And thank you to our sound and AV men down the back uh, recording for us as well. Uh, I know that's a, a bigger task than it maybe used to be. Uh, so it's good to have you doing that for us. We're going to turn uh, to God's Word uh, together now. If you have your, your Bible handy in the house there, uh, I encourage you uh, to get it out. Otherwise, uh, the words will be coming up on the screen, but it's good for us uh, to read God's Word together. So if you have your Bible, uh, get, you can get it out uh, and let us read uh, God's Word together. We're, we're going back uh, to uh, our studies in Ruth. Uh, we had looked at Ruth uh, a few weeks uh, a few weeks ago, uh, the last Sunday of the, of the year, uh, and we did say we would come back and take a look at those verses and, and take a look uh, at the specific people uh, involved in that. So uh, we're going to do that uh, today. So we're going to read uh, through from Ruth chapter 1, uh, verses 1 uh, to 5. In fact, I might actually just read on uh, to verse 7. Uh, so if it doesn't come up on the screen, uh, apologies, but uh, let's follow on and let's listen uh, to God's word uh, together. Ruth chapter 1, reading from verse 1. This is God's word to us. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land. So a man from Bethlehem and Judah, together with his wife and two sons, went to live for a while in the country of Moab. The man's name was Elimelech, and his wife's name was Naomi. The names of his two sons were Malon and Kilion. They were Epaphrodites from Bethlehem, Judah, and they went to Moab and lived there. Now Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left with her two sons. They married a Moabite woman, one named Orpha and the other Ruth. After they had lived there about 10 years, both Malon and Kilion also died, and Naomi was left without her two sons and her husband. Let's just read on verses 6 and 7. When Naomi heard in Moab that the Lord had come to the aid of his people by providing food for them, she and her, she and her daughters-in-law prepared to return home from there. With her two daughters-in-law, she left the place where she had been living and set out on the road that would take them back to the land of Judah. Amen. We end our reading there at verse 7. And we do trust uh, that God uh, will bless the reading of his word and indeed speak to us uh, as we think about that uh, together in a moment or two. But first, I want to take a moment just to talk uh, to the children. Uh, and if any were, were listening in uh, those couple of Sundays ago, uh, you'll know what we were talking about decisions and making a decision uh, to follow Jesus. Uh, and I want to think a little bit more about that today uh, because this story that we've just read uh, from, from the Bible is, is all about decisions, decisions people make. And we have lots of, of different decisions uh, to make in life, don't we? Even uh, if we're very young uh, and as we get older, there are other decisions that we have to make, some more important than others. And of course, uh, to help us think about that, I brought a little selection box with me. Now, you will all have received, uh, I hope, a little selection box uh, before Christmas there. I know they were handed out to all our Sunday school children uh, and families. And if you didn't get one, um, you can come and see me. There are still a few uh, left over. Um, but selection boxes are great, aren't they? Who doesn't love a good selection box? Who doesn't love a feed of chocolate at Christmas? But they create a problem, don't they? Because it says, open Christmas joy here. And you open it up and look at all that lovely stuff in there. Look at it. What would you choose first? Rebecca, what would you choose first? You see, you don't know. Buttons, buttons. Mark, what would you choose first? The dairy milk. The, dairy milk, the wee chocolate bar. But if I told you I was going to take the dairy milk bar, you'd be cross to start with, wouldn't you? But would you change your mind? Would it really matter if you got the buttons of the dairy milk? Not really, sure it doesn't. It doesn't really matter what decision we make to eat first. It doesn't really matter what decision I make first what to eat in this here because I'm going to eat it all anyway. <laughs> so it's all going to get eaten at some stage. But that's what I'm kind of getting at. 
the decision we make on things like this doesn't really matter. We can choose one or we can choose the other and it has no consequences for us really. But of course, as we grow up, as we go to school, as we go out uh, to work and so on, as we grow up in life, there are lots of different decisions that we have to make. And they're a lot more serious than this year. They impact our lives. And the best way to make those decisions is to make them with God. And that's what I want you to take away from this message today, is that life decisions are so much easier with God. In our story, there were decisions made and God wasn't even consulted. God wasn't spoken to. The people just made the decisions themselves. And it didn't turn out very well for them. But we trust in a God, as we've said already, who loves us, who cares for us, and a God who wants the best for us. So if God wants the best for us, then we should speak to him, shouldn't we? We should talk to him and ask him to help us in all those decisions. And God is good and gracious and does that for us. God speaks to us through his word and we speak to him in prayer and he can help us make those big decisions which impact the rest of our lives. It's good advice for us all, not just the young people listening today, but for all of us, whether it's a young or, or maybe not so young. Make our decisions with God. Speak to God. Pray to God and ask him to help you to make those big decisions in life. Let me pray with you uh, once again. Let's just pray uh, before we, we sing together again. Let's pray. Father, we thank you once again that you are a God who loves us and cares for us. And you are a God who doesn't leave us on our own. Father, we thank you that you are there for us to, to talk to at any time. Father, we thank you that when we know you as our Heavenly Father, you are there to be spoken to wherever we are, whenever it is. Lord, we thank you that you're there to help us make decisions in life. Because Lord, we know left to our own devices, left to make our own decisions. Or so often uh, we make very wrong decisions. So Father, we pray for each and every young person connected to this congregation. Lord, we pray for ourselves as the older members of this congregation that we would take that time in prayer, that time in in studying your word that you might speak to us and to help us. So Father, will you help us? Will you lead us and guide us in all things? For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We are going to sing again together our next uh, piece of praise is take my life and let it be all you purpose, Lord, for me. It's all about handing our lives uh, every moment and every aspect of them to God and that is the best thing for us all to do. So let's just sing this uh, together. I'm always tempted to say let's stand to sing um, but of course Rebecca and I will stand. uh, If you want to stand at home, stand up uh, and sing and sing to your heart's content. Uh, Take my life and let it be all you purpose, Lord, for me. Let's worship God together.
Let's just still ourselves uh, once again in prayer together. Let's, t- let's take time uh, to, to come in a time of intercessory prayers. Let's pray together, as the screen says, uh, for the needs of our world, for the needs of ourselves, for the needs of our communities and the needs of our people. You know, as we've already said, there are, there are many in need, there are many worried and anxious at this time, and it's good for us uh, to take time uh, to pray for them. Um, as I always would say, as God leads you, uh, bring those situations and those people to him in prayer. Uh, but allow me uh, to lead you in this time uh, for a moment or two. Let's, let's come to God in prayer. Let's, let's pray uh, together. Father, we thank you once again that you are a God who hears us, that you're a God who listens to us, that we have this wonderful access to come to you with our prayers and our petitions. And Lord, surely as we come at a time like this, our our hearts are heavy, our hearts are, are burdened for the situation that we find ourselves in our world at the minute and our country at the minute and yes, even in our own towns and streets at the minute. Lord, as we think of this latest lockdown, or we want to take time uh, to think about it and to pray about it. We want to pray uh, for the duration of this lockdown, or we want to pray that it would be shorter rather than longer. But whilst uh, we are in the midst of these rising numbers and these rising deaths and these rising cases in hospital, or we want to pray especially for safety for each and every one of us for ourselves, for our families, for our congregations, and yes, for our community. Lord, we want to pray that we would be wise. We pray for wisdom. Lord, we've been given much advice by our medical experts and our scientific advisors. Lord, we we thank you for that advice, and Lord, we pray that we would be wise enough uh, to adhere to that advice. Lord, to know the the right thing to do. Well, as the saying goes, to to stay at home and to stay safe. Lord, we thank you for uh, our leaders. Lord, we thank you for our politicians and government. We thank you for our church leaders. Lord, who have helped lead us through this pandemic, Lord, who make decisions that none of us would want to make. Yes, we confess we are often critical of the decisions we make and we're not happy about some of the decisions they make, but Lord, they are the ones called to make the the difficult decisions. And Lord, we pray that as they make those decisions, Lord, that it would be with you in mind. Lord, as we have recognized before and always recognized, Lord, we live in a world and a society which, which shuns you Never mind, it asks you for help with decisions. And Lord, we ask for them what we ask for ourselves, that you would be in the midst of all the decisions and that they have to make. And Lord, we want to pray for those, yes, within our families, within our congregation and within our communities who, who may find this next, these next weeks of lockdown very difficult, stressful. I want to pray for those who might be lonely during this when we can't have the same people around in our houses. Those who are anxious and worried about the spread of this virus. Father, we pray uh, that they would know something of of your peace, your contentment, and and indeed your strength to see this uh, another lockdown through. Lord, we want to pray today for our health service. Lord, we thank you for it. We thank you for the wonderful blessing that it is. But Lord, as we watch our news day by day, we see it under strain. We see our our doctors and nurses and healthcare workers under serious stress. And so we want to pray for all in health and social care. Those working in our hospitals, those working in our care homes, those bringing care to those in our community or those facing uh, the, the threat of this virus head on. And Lord, what we have prayed for everyone, we pray especially for them for safety. Lord, we thank you for what has been provided for them to keep them safe. 
And Lord, we pray indeed that it would be. I want to pray for all essential workers. Yes, we thank you for our health and social care workers, but rather the list of essential workers is endless. All those in the essential retail businesses, through the farmer in the field and the lorry driver delivering the goods. Lord, all to keep this country running. And Lord, we pray for safety and help for them. I want to pray for the, the rollout of this vaccine. Lord, we thank you for the progress that has been made in, in both these vaccines that have been approved. And Lord, we pray that more would be made available. The scheduling of these vaccinations would be to be able to ramp up to use uh, the word. And that more, Lord, would be able to receive uh, this vaccine sooner. And Lord, that we would see our world return to to some sense of normality. Lord, we want to pray for ourselves as your people, as your fellowship and family here. Lord, again, whilst we're apart, Lord, we know it causes, our, causes us anxiety and worry. Lord, we, we love to meet and enjoy the fellowship together as we worship you together. But Lord, we pray that even though we might be apart, that we might continue to be built up, that we might continue to hold fast to our belief and our assurance in you. And we pray that we would continue to keep close to you day by day, that we might be that constant example, that, that light of your love, as the moderator put it, out in the our communities. Father, we thank you that you hear our prayers. Lord, we leave all these prayers, all these petitions, both spoken, spoken here and spoken in the hearts of those joined in worship. And Lord, leave them with you in the confidence we have because we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As I said earlier, uh, a few weeks ago I mentioned we were going to be taking a look at the beginning of the story of Ruth because it's essentially a story about decisions and choices uh, that we make in life. It's about those defining moments uh, in life and of course the impact that they, they have on our lives and especially on our futures. Yes, I know we digressed somewhat from that last week to, to think about communion. Uh, so I think it's it's only right that we take a look at the second part that, that I mentioned uh, before we move on to our, our next series of teaching as we maybe go back into uh, the Sermon on the Mount that we had been looking to uh, previously. So if you remember back to uh, the last Sunday of the last year, um, the end of 2020, the reminder was that we were all on a journey through life. We are all on a road that is leading us uh, to one destination or another. And the obvious question or, or the challenge was, and of course still is, where is that destination? Where are you heading? Which road are you taking in life? Are you making or following choices which turn you towards God or away from him? Now, I hope it would be safe to say that we've realized by now how applicable this book of Ruth is to us today and how it impacts how we make choices in our lives because of the context of the society that uh, the story is set in. If you remember when we looked at it the last time, there was that phrase uh, which set the scene for the, the whole story. Uh, and of course, we're reminded of it again. In those days, we are told from the very beginning, everybody done what they wanted. Everybody done as they pleased. And as we recognize then, is that uh, the society all those years ago or is that our society today? The society back then had become largely materialistic and, and even hedonistic. It had found itself in this downward spiral uh, to God, of disobedience to God. Uh, in fact, God rarely featured, if he did at all, in the thoughts and decisions of the majority of people. Decisions about life and so on were hard for God's people to make because of the overwhelming influence of society. And we recognize, didn't we, that it's just the same for us today as it was back then. The influence of society is influencing the decisions that we make 
And yes, sadly, quite often, God doesn't feature in our decision. It's just as hard to make decisions about our our lives and, and our beliefs today. We are in a society that has clearly turned its back on God. And certainly as Christians, we are constantly being bombarded by society standards that clearly have no thought uh, for God and his word or his standards at all. It's as difficult for us in days when society seems to rule as it was in those days when the judges ruled. So to help us think uh, about the choices we make and the place of God in those choices and of course the consequences of those choices. I want to do, as I said I would do, I want to focus in uh, on some of the people in the story and I want to to, to zoom in, uh, to use that word again on the first two people in Ruth's story, Elimelech and Naomi. And I want to hone in on them specifically because in that turbulent and and godless society of of the day, Elimelech had a choice to make. And the choice he had to make uh, would have consequences for him and his whole family. Should he stay in Bethlehem, which was in a state of famine, or should he move his family out of Israel? Stay in Bethlehem or go? What road was Elimelech going to choose? Stay in that promised land because that's what Bethlehem was. It was part of the promised land. Stay in the promised land or go in search of of greener fields elsewhere. It sounds like an easy decision to make, doesn't it? Surely the obvious thing is, is just to move. It might be the promised land, but it's in famine. And to move out meant food for the family. The obvious thing to do is to move. And yes, of course, if we're thinking from a a purely human point of view, that's the right decision. But in reality, the decision he had to make wasn't from a human perspective. The decision he had to make was simply a choice of obedience or disobedience to God. It's worth thinking uh, about what Elimelech was considering here. Really for us, where we live or where we serve God doesn't really matter, does it? We can serve God in Glendermot or the Gaza Strip. It doesn't matter, although the second one would take a bit of thought and serious prayer. But it was different for Elimelech. God had called him to live in Bethlehem. And those are serious words, aren't they? God had called him to live in Bethlehem. So the last thing in his mind should have been to leave there. And least of all, for the country of Moab. Moab, if you didn't know, was not a good place for Israelites. Moab originated from the incestuous relationship between Lot and his daughter. Not only that, their king had tried to bring curses on Israel. Their woman, the woman of Moab, had caused some men in Israel uh, to, to go out into the wilderness and to worship false gods. Moab was definitely a country that was leading God's people astray. Does that sound like a good place to take and to raise a godly family, even though there was food there? I don't think so. But he made his choice. And sadly, yes, he chose Moab. He was no different from anybody else. And so instead of making a godly informed decision, well, he lived up to the scene set for us. He did just the same as the rest of the people did. He done as he saw fit. Instead of having faith and trusting God to provide for him and his family, he made his choice simply materialistically and chose the road to Moab. And I wonder, I wonder which road each of us would choose. 
Very often in those defining moments in life where we do get to choose, where we seem to get to direct our own course for the future, the factors that we take under consideration are usually those that seem most likely to provide for us materialistically. The choices we make are usually those that provide us with comfort and security. The bottom line is, just like the rest of society, often God's will and God's call in our lives rarely has an impact on the decision. More often than not, we turn to our own best prospects for our happiness and success. Instead of taking that time like we talked to the children about it, by turning to God's word and talking to him in prayer to earnestly seek his will in the situation, we look to ourselves, to our own self-interest and our own self-importance. We make choices that seem best in our eyes without any reference to God and often without any serious thought about the long-term consequences. So many people today, friends, like to label themselves as Christians. Yet their Christianity has no real impact on their life-defining decisions, much in the same way as Elimelech done. Elimelech literally means, my God is king. Yet his choices I think made it clear that God wasn't, in, wasn't the king of his life at all, was he? Would it be true to say that often the decisions we make really reveal the, the true commitment of our hearts? So in life choices, friends, we need to seek the will of our king and not ourselves. Elimelech put himself first. Elimelech put himself as king in his life. But we need to look to the true king, to the Lord Jesus. We need to look to God to help us. Or unfortunately, as it says on our screens there, the, for Elimelech, that road to Moab literally turned out to be a road to nowhere. Initially, yes, it didn't seem that that was the case. But it rarely does though, doesn't it? But inevitably, that's how it turns out. Initially, it looked like he made a great choice. While the rest of his kinsmen in Bethlehem were suffering and hungry, he's sitting pretty in the land of plenty. Moab had food and plenty of it, so he was able to support his wife and his two sons comfortably. But the reality was that, well, that decision was only temporary. It was only for the short term. What's the phrase? We've all heard it, short-term gain, with, but with long-term consequences. He didn't really think about what the future might hold. He simply looked to the short term and to his well-being. Does not sound familiar quite often to us as well. There are so many people today out there drifting along through life without any grand plan for the, the long term future, never mind eternity. Simply living for what they can gain in the, in the here and the now. But unfortunately for Elimelech, well, Moab did become a permanent choice because he died there. So it was decision time again, only this time for Naomi. Elimelech made the wrong choice. Now it's decision time for his wife, Naomi. Stay in Moab or repent and return with her family to their own land and to their own God. Keep doing what you've been doing or fall on your knees and ask for God's forgiveness for your disobedience. Which choice would she make? Well, she chose to stay. Obviously, she was much of the same mind as, as her husband. She rated her prospects better in Moab than in Bethlehem. Comfortable in the land of compromise rather than in the land of promise. 
She chose to stay, which of course just leads to further disobedience. And friends, isn't that the problem? Once we go down the path of disobedience, it's very easy to stay on that path, isn't it? Yes, we may struggle with our consciences when we first step outside God's will, but once we're out there, it takes less effort to stay out there, doesn't it? And often the only obstacle keeping us out there is our own pride, our own self-importance. We don't like to have to admit that we made a bad choice, let alone admit that we have been disobedient to God. Somehow, and sometimes it's easier to bear the pain of our emptiness, of bad decisions, than to confess that our pursuit of self has led us to the wrong place. Naomi was content in Moab. But if you remember back to our reading in one verse, her whole world comes crashing down because her two sons die as well. And she's left as a stranger in this foreign land. There's no welfare system like there is today. She had no family other than her daughters-in-law to support her. So she now faced another life-defining moment. She was given another opportunity to make a decision. Although this time, it would seem that she didn't have any choice at all. Naomi was going to have to swallow her pride and go back. It was time for her prodigal daughter to go home. By this time, Bethlehem has experienced God's favor and God's grace. Things were good again. Maybe it was time for Naomi to seek that in her life as well. To seek God's grace, God's forgiveness, and look for God's favor. Friends, isn't that the amazing thing about grace? Naomi and her husband had set out on the road of, of blatant disobedience. They had made choices with no thought to God's will or God's law, and in some respects, we could say that they experienced the reality of God's judgment for those decisions. Yet in God's grace, he didn't leave Naomi alone. He left her with her two daughters-in-law, giving her hope that there may be a future for her. Friends, God does judge sin and disobedience. God does judge disobedience and it does have consequences. But God's word reliably tells us over and over again that he is a gracious God, that he is a forgiving God, that it is his desire to restore wandering sinners to himself. And we can often find ourselves in that same position as Elimelech and Naomi. The grass often does look greener on the Moabite side of the fence. We can be, attempted, we can be tempted to abandon the, the, the bread of heaven for the materialism that the world offers. Same as Naomi, we can be content in the land of compromise instead of the land of promise. And we can often complain about what God has in his providence chosen for us. And yes, we struggle when we see the Moabites uh, doing so well. When we see the godless in our society doing better as it seems than we are. And in our lack of trust, we fantasize about those greener fields. And yes, we're often led astray by the lure of them down that path of disobedience as well. But the comforting truth, the challenge for us, is to recognize God's sovereignty and grace. We've said a lot about God's sovereignty today already, haven't we? The challenge for us is to, to recognize and remember God's sovereignty and grace. The way of unfaithfulness and disobedience to God 
It's still the way of death. Elimelech and his sons paid, paid for their disobedience with their physical lives. And we pay for it in our spiritual lives. Dead to eternity. But fortunately for us, God's grace surpasses that rebellion we have. God's grace surpasses that rebellion and enables us to see our foolishness and enables our hearts to see those welcoming arms that reach out and await our return. The Spirit of God stirred Naomi's heart to leave that land of compromise. The Spirit of God stirred Naomi's heart to swallow her pride and start out on that road back to the land of promise. And even though she may not have been responsible for all those decisions in her life, she was responsible for at least some of her troubles. But nonetheless, she now had a future because of the grace and goodness of God. It didn't matter how far she had wandered from her home. The road to her return was, was only one step away. And this, this is the same hope uh, for us friends. Even if we have chosen that road of rebellion, even if we have chosen that road of disobedience, even we have made bad decisions in our lives, and even if we have persisted in that way for a long time, there is still a way home. There's an old Chinese proverb that says, a, a journey of a thousand miles starts with a single step. Friend, by the amazing grace of God, that road to nowhere that you might be on may yet turn out to be the first step on your journey home. The question is, are you prepared to take that step? Are you prepared to, to swallow your pride like Naomi and make that choice to follow God and allow him to lead you on your journey through this life? Friends, we have focused a lot and said a lot about the pandemic and the situation that we find ourselves in. And we all have decisions to make. When you make those decisions with God or without him. Let me pray with you. Let's, let's pray as we finish. Let's, let's pray. Father, we, we thank you once again for your grace and for your favor in our lives. Father, we thank you that in spite of those times of, of disobedience where we continually find ourselves preferring the ways of the world to your ways, we thank you that you are still that loving, forgiving God. Lord, we pray that you would help each of us to turn to you, to follow your path, the path that you have laid out for us. And Lord, we pray for for any who haven't taken that step to follow you yet. And Lord, we pray that maybe even the difficulties of, of these days and maybe the bad decisions that they've even made, or that you would use them and speak into their hearts and turn them to you. Or we pray that you would withdraw them to yourself, that they might enjoy the journey of life with you walking alongside them. So once again, Father, we pray that you would help each of us, that you would lead us and guide us through whatever this life brings for us. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're going to join in worship and song uh, once again together as we bring our service to a close uh, with all I once held dear build my life upon all this world of years and wars to own. Knowing you, Jesus, it is the greatest thing. Let's, let's worship God together.
Uh, we thank you for joining with us uh, in this online service. Uh, we do uh, trust that you, you keep safe. Uh, well, my, my little saying, as I often do, keep safe, keep trusting, uh, and keep praying. But let's, let's pray as we finish with our God of love and light prayer, and then I'll close uh, with the benediction, and we do trust you'll be able to join with us uh, next Sunday here online once again. Let's, let's pray together. God of love and light, in this time of fear, give us your peace. In this time of isolation, give us your presence. In this time of sickness, give us your healing. In this time of uncertainty, give us your wisdom. In this time of darkness, shine your light upon us all in Jesus' name. And we pray the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit would go with each of us both now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. See you next week, folks.